Bucket. I play in Austin's loudest psychedelic trio, Day Eater. I play bass, and I'm here at Four String Ranch, here to talk about awesome rock and roll bass tone. Let me tell you about my bass rig I'm running today. I get to play this beautiful Rickenbacker 4003, which has a interesting stereo output on it. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little about how I utilize that. So today I have it run through two separate sources. One is DI going directly into the board and one is through this awesome amp setup I have back behind me. Um, I'm gonna go from the source all the way through the board and then we'll get to the big boy back here. So I come out of here, it's split into two signals. It splits the neck pickup and the bridge pickup to two separate sources. So I send my bridge pickup down to my pedal board and it goes directly into this dark glass electronics vintage deluxe. It's sort of like a, a tube amp emulator. That's my dirty tone that I have pretty much on all the time. Then it hits the bass Big Muff Pi, which is like all the fuzz. It's where I get the biggest, loudest tone I can get. And I have some fun pedals at the end. I have a pitch fork for doing solos and making noise and it, it pitches thing up an octave and, and I play with it with this control over here. Out of there, uh, it, co it goes to my amp. I'm running a PV, this is a like 19, around the 1970s, 80s, PV uh, F800B. It's a solid state amp and I'm running it through two acoustic cabinets. This top one is a 410, and this bottom one is a 115 cabinet. So that's the dirty signal. The other signal is clean. I take my neck pickup, it goes down into a little bit of compression, and then it goes into a DI box that's going directly into the board. Then you blend the two of those, and you come up with a ripping bass tone that sounds a little like this. So here's what it sounds like clean, just the DI, just the neck pickup. Here's what it sounds like with my dark glass distortion pedal on. Here's what it sounds like with the dark glass and the big muff on. At the beginning of the song, I make a bunch of noise. Uh, I like to turn this pitchfork on, do some pitch bending, make it sound real wild. So my pitchfork, the way it's hooked up is that I have an expression pedal connected to it here, similar to a wah, but it allows me to continuously change the pitch. Uh, I have it set to 
one octave up, a mixture of an octave up and the dry tone. And so you can hear me bend the pitch up and down using the expression pedal. Here's what it sounds like clean. So playing in a rock trio uh, gives the bass player a little more things to think about and what they're trying to achieve. And my particular band is loud, in your face, high energy. And so I feel the need to bring my tone out and really cover a lot of ground underneath for the guitar to sit on top of. So I split my tone, I make sure I always have low end, clean and compressed low end to be the bottom, but I have that high, kind of high mids, crunchy, fuzzy tone to be the, sort of the uh, rhythm guitar to my lead player, my, my lead guitar player's tone. I decided to buy this bass because I love the look, I love the sound. Uh, I, would, I would go online and just research, just Rick and backers and listen to them and just be like, oh, I wish I had one. I finally got one. And then when I took it home, I was like, oh yeah, I have a stereo output. What do I even do with that? And so I started experimenting in the practice room and trying different things out and trying by amping two different amps uh, and just really experimenting. But like the idea of being a rhythm guitar bass player uh, really comes from the other great, you know, 70s rock and roll power trios that I love so much. People like uh, Jack Bruce in The Cream or even Lemmy Kilmeister in Motorhead really inspired me to play the part of lead bass in some way. So in the track you just heard Sleepy Brain, which is a song I wrote for Day Eater. Uh, I'm doing a couple different things. I do octaves during the verses to really just give a lot of sound, a lot of underneath sound so the guitar can fit on top of that and really fill the space. And then during the choruses where it's quieter, we have a three-part harmony vocal going. And so I back it off, I turn the big muff off, and I go to palm muting and keeping the rhythm right on top of the kick drum to really let the vocals pierce out atop. Here's what it sounds like with octave playing during the verse in Sleepy Brain. Here's what it sounds like during the chorus when I'm palm muting and just have the distortion on in Sleepy Brain. One of the other great features of this amazing bass guitar is the tone settings. Uh, today, I've been playing with the retro setting on the bridge pickup. So this, this particular tone knob can be pushed and pulled, and it gives two different effects. With it normally pushed down against the body, it has a lot more fatness to it. And it has a real good kind of jazz bassy sound almost. And today, the way I have it set up is in retro mode. It really just strips a lot of the low end out of it and gives it a more tinny, um, mid-rangey bite. And the reason for that is that I'm, um, 
I'm already getting a lot of low end from the clean and compressed neck pickup. So I send this tinny sounding bridge pickup through all the pedals and make it real nasty sounding, then blend it with a nice buttery neck pickup. So rock bass guitar playing is really exciting to me because it has a, a long history of experimentation and just people really pushing the limits of what the bass can, can do, whether it's in more, you know, jazz or experimental fields like Les Claypool or even Jaco Pastorius or, or again, Lemmy with just all full force drive, how much distortion can we put on a bass and make it sound good. You should always feel free to experiment with your tone and just try to make it sound better. And that's what I feel like I'm always doing and will continue to do as I play bass. If you like this video or found it useful, please give it a like, share it with your friends. Please subscribe to the Four String Ranch YouTube channel. This is Christopher Brockett from Day Eater reminding you to have a good time with your bass tone.